Starring George Murphy in Algerian Adventure on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Ted Pearson. Good grooming consists of a lot of little things. It may be the way women apply their makeup or the fastidious attention men give their necktie or the shine on their shoes. The minor things may be, but important. Another important aid to good grooming is... These plastic combs are among the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents Algerian Adventure, a story of high intrigue against the background of the War of 1812, starring George Murphy as Mordecai Noah on the Cavalcade of America. (laughs) Go in, Americanis. Look here, I protest. Silence! Guard, lock the door. But we're American citizens. We demand our rights. <laughs> we demand to see the American consul. American consul. We frightened him away. Your country is through, finished. When you are well broken in, my friends, I shall promote you to be my slaves. The personal slaves of the Bay of Algiers. American vessel lies imprisoned in the dungeons of the Bay of Algiers. So helpless is the American Navy, engaged in the War of 1812, that the pirates of the Barbary states, Algiers and Tunis, prey freely on our shipping. It is then that President Madison calls to the White House a young man named Mordecai Noah. Sit down, Mr. Noah. Thank you, Mr. President. I have called you because I understand from your colleagues in the State Department that you know Arabic. Yes, Mr. President. Also, you know something of the Arab people. I've studied them quite a lot, sir. Fine. Mr. Noah, your country needs you. I'm sending you on a mission that uh, will be very dangerous. What is it, sir? You will go as a consul to Tunis. Me? A consul? Mr. President, I don't... Just a moment, Mr. Noah. I don't need to tell you of our desperate plight in that part of the world. In Algiers, six American sailors lie in prison, perhaps under torture. I don't dare appoint a consul in, in Algiers because his life wouldn't be safe. And uh, in Tunis? I don't know, Mr. Noah. The Bay of Tunis is unfriendly. How unfriendly, we don't know. Uh-huh. But no American ship has dared dock there for many months. We have a consular office there, but we've lost contact. I don't even know how you get to Tunis. But somehow you must reach there, and when you do, this is your mission. Yes, sir. If you, from Tunis, can do anything in your power to bring about the release of those men imprisoned in nearby Algiers, your country will be eternally grateful. It's a dangerous and almost hopeless mission. Will you try it? Yes, Mr. President, I will. You don't know how glad I am that you finally arrived in Tunis. You're no gladder than I am, Mr. Farrell. It's taken me months. We'll reach the consulate in just a moment. We're just beyond that park here. You know, it's a very nice-looking town. I hardly think of that anymore. Really, you don't know what a terrifying feeling it is to be here in Tunis, completely cut off. Mr. Noah, do you realize that we're absolutely helpless here? Yes, I, I'm afraid I do. Uh, now, Mr. Noah, when we come to a stop at the consulate... I'll take these two suitcases of yours, and if you'll take that box, then we can make a dash for it. Uh, wait a minute. Make a dash for it? Yes, sir. Outside the building, there's generally a small crowd collected, and they amuse themselves thinking up new insults. Oh, oh. Oh, yes, I can see them. There are quite a few people there now. Yes, they shout threats, and sometimes they throw things. But why? Because they know we're losing the war. Why, Mr. Noah, if we get one more report of an American naval reverse, our lives won't be safe. Oh. Their contempt grows with every defeat. All right. Here we are. Now, get ready, Mr. Noah. Uh, Mr. Farrell, really, I'm sure it would be better to... I've got the leases. Are you ready? Too bad. Can't steal it now. 
Oh, my goodness. Uh, come on, Mr. Noah. Robert, uh, just a minute, Mr. Farrell. You know, uh, uh, that's a very interesting tree there. Very interesting specimen. And how beautifully it grows here. Mr. Noah, please, this way. Come, hurry. Bali de la Khayam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Americani. Shara. Mufish Ajayb Khazaram. Mali, Mali. Mr. Noah, please, come inside. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Farrell. Just a moment. Get ready to move fast when I tell you. Uh, this is really a wonderful specimen of a type of tree that is particularly esteemed by the Arabs. I've just been discussing it with this gentleman. Very glad to find it growing in front of the consulate. Shall we uh, go in now? All right, quick, inside. Whew. Gracious, Mr. Noah. You took an awful chance. Yes, I, I know. That man had a knife on him. Yes, I know he did. I saw it. They were all armed. But good heavens, man, weren't you scared? Of course I was. What do you think I am? But Mr. Farrell. We have to adopt a basic policy about things like this. Uh, what do you mean? I'm, I'm trembling all over. Well, I, I'm a little shaky myself. Now, sit down. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> By the way, this will be your office right here, sir. Uh-huh. Very adequate. Now, sit down, Mr. Farrell. Uh, yes, sir. Now, look, Farrell. This is our policy. I, as counsel, and you, as counselor secretary, must never show fear in front of these people. We must always seem confident. Our attitude must be that we expect confirmation any minute. Of an important naval victory. Hmm. Have we anything on which to base such a hope? No, no, unfortunately. But confidence may get us some victories. Besides, as the Arab would put it, the dog with no teeth cannot join the hunt. The dog That's with an no... old Arab proverb. So remember, confidence. I hope you know what you're doing, sir. Now, have we any news of those American seamen in Algiers? No, sir. We don't even know if they're still alive. It's awful. Mm -hmm, I see. Well, the president has given me twelve thousand dollars to try to ransom these men. Such a pitiful sum that I haven't much hope, but it's all we can get. So our first try will be a letter to the Bay of Algiers. Shall we start right now, sir? Why not? Take this down, Farrell. Yes. Most illustrious prince, protector of the poor, defender of the poor. Protector of the poor, defender of the weak. I offer you, for the release of your American prisoners, the sum of... <laughs> the sum of $12,000. <laughs> Hassan, you will answer this young upstart American. Yes, my lord. You will say to the most illustrious Sayyid Noah from his... Uh... <laughs> Humble servant, the Bay of Algiers. If you should place at my feet all the gold. To the most illustrious Seed Noah, from his humble servant, the Bay of Algiers, if you should place at my feet all the gold in the world, it would not be enough. I shall keep these prisoners as my slaves. The villain. I suppose he's bargaining for a bigger offer. No, no, the letter seems too final. It doesn't have the Arab bargaining manner. Besides, there can be no bigger offer. Oh, it makes my blood boil. Well, what can we do next? Uh, hand me that police, please. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. What can we do? We don't know what's going on. We have no money, no power. No threat that we can make is worth anything. We've... Uh, what on earth? Well, how do you like it? What are you putting on those clothes for? This is the jalaba of an Arab merchant. I got it in the bazaar the other day. Here, help me with this cloak. What's that, man? Uh, gird, they call it. Here, it goes around the shoulder like this. Oh, there you are. Yes. You see, there are plenty of places to hide a knife or a gun. This is all very interesting, Mr. Noah, but where does it get us? Well, I'm not sure yet myself, but I know this. We need more information. We can't get it here in Tunis. So I'm going to Algiers to do some, well, uh, research. Now, uh, this dark oil, they say if you rub it into the skin, uh, yes, by golly, look at that, you see? My word. <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> now, look, Farrell, while I'm away, do the best you can. And remember, we have intimations of an important naval victory. I wish I could feel that way, but I'll try to remember. Here, yeah, now, see how this looks. It looks very good, sir. But I hope you know how dangerous it is. All I know, Mr. Farrell, is that there are six American citizens in the dungeons of the Bay of Algiers tonight. Mr. Noah, I only pray there won't be seven by tomorrow. My 
lord, protector of the weak, defender of the poor. What is it? Our spies from Tunis report that the young American consul has disappeared. He's believed to have come here to Algiers, but then our men lost track of him. They do not know where he is now. You will tell the secret police to spread a wide network for him. Search through all the marketplaces. He must be made prisoner and brought to me. We shall find a place for him in our most handsome dungeon.
second act opens during the War of 1812 in the palace of the Bay of Tunis, where Mordecai Noah, American consul, sits silently in an anteroom awaiting an audience. His colleague, Farrell, sits nervously beside him, trying to fathom the reason for his presence here when their great problem is to rescue the seamen held captive by the Bay of Algiers. Will you see Noah and his illustrious friend follow me? We will follow. It is way, please. Where do you think he's taking us? To a lion's den? Will you please take that frightened expression off your face, Farrell? It's become permanent. I even sleep with it now. Are you sure the Bay of Tunis likes music boxes? Of course he likes music boxes. His secret agent told me so. Mm -hmm. Oh, protector of the poor, defender of the weak, the sage North, Americani, Fayette North. Great ruler, in the name of my country, many boxes of fine gifts are being brought here to your palace. We think you will enjoy them. As a sample, we have brought just a few with us. Show me. I will. Now, here is a gold-studded pistol. Oh. And here is some fine brocade. Oh. And here is a clock. If you wish to be waked at a certain hour, this is how the clock does it. <laughs> ah, this is good. This is good. Why? Uh, what is a great ruler? Say us no. Some of my spies have informed me that you have gone in secret to Algiers. Have you given such presents also to my friends, the Bay of Algiers? Oh, no. No, indeed, great ruler. For uh -huh. him, there were none. Not that we do not uh, want friendship also with the Bay of Algiers, but our friendship for him is being shown in a different way. Oh, what way? Well, a treaty, perhaps. A treaty? Yes, in view of our growing naval might and the naval victories of which you will soon hear news, is it any surprise that a treaty with the Bay of Algiers should be, uh, shall we say, under discussion? Ah, uh, that swine in Algiers has tricked me. He swore by Allah and the prophets that your country was weak and that to deal with you was foolish. Yes, I see it now. He wished to be the first with the treaty and gain advantage over me. Wait. Imshi! Imshi! Fisa! Now you will dismiss your companions, yet Noah. And we will talk alone, my friend. And then the treaty says, the Bay of Tunis guarantees safe passage through the waters he controls to all ships of the United States of America. In other words, Farrell, when our ships run the British blockade, they'll find refuge in Tunisian waters. I still don't know how you did it. Well, there's an Arabic proverb, uh, to a dog without meat. Another dog's food is paradise. I learned in Algiers of the hatred between the two bays. But now, how are you going to use this against the Bay of Algiers? Ah, that's the problem. Can you play on his fears the same way? Well, we can try. That's the whole idea, to make him want a treaty. Ah. And then, as a condition, we'll insist on the release of those prisoners. Look, if I send a confidential report to my superiors about the new treaty... Do you think we can count on it being seen by the spies of the Bay of Algiers? Well, judging from the past, I... Oh, I see what you mean. Well, well, let's put those spies to work for us. And so, in recognition of our growing naval might and the increasing success of our ships at sea, we have been able to make a very satisfactory treaty with the Bay of Tunis, where... Ma the dog! The Bay of Tunis has tricked me. He is changing sides behind my back. We shall see. We shall see what shall be done. We shall see! asks that you make yourself comfortable here in this room. Please rest and refresh yourselves from your journey. He will speak with you again later at the banquet. Very good. Thank you. Bislama. Bislama. Hey, he bolted the door. Yeah, yeah, so he did. Well, I... I suppose he did that so he wouldn't be wandering around the palace. You think that's all? 
And I think so. He received us well enough. He wouldn't have given the state conduct from Tunis and the Guard of Honor through the city if he was planning any treachery. Why not? Well, I, I'm not sure, but I just don't think so. Besides, look at the handsome little room he's put us in. Those tiles and beautiful hangings. Uh, that's an awfully small window. Yes, I know what you're thinking, Farrell. <laughs> but it happens to be a main characteristic of their architecture. Small windows make for coolness. It is cool. Kind of damp, even. Look, there's water dripping down from the ceiling. You well, know, it rained yesterday. It must be a leak. How can you be so calm? Because we've got to keep our heads. Don't you honestly think something is dead wrong? No, I don't know. The base seems to be stalling. That's what bothers me. He doesn't seem ready to talk about the treaty, even though he invited us here for that. Yeah. Say, those windows down in the court with bars across them, they look like prison cells. I certainly do. And look at that ugly-looking citizen going in there with the scimitar in his hands. Look, you can see the harbor from here. Big ship is dropping anchor. I wish to heaven I was on it. Mm. Say, that's it. What? That's what he's stalling for. He's waiting for news. We've kept talking about naval victories, and he wants to wait for the facts. And if that ship brings the wrong kind of news, it can undo all the work we've done. Have you so little faith in your country that you think that the news could only be bad news? I don't know. It's this being cut off that drives you crazy, not knowing what's happening. Yes? The Americani will follow, please. Of the Bay of Tunis? Of course. 
I, uh, I've amused you. I am laughing at a, at a proverb, an American proverb. A good one? Oh, an excellent one, Protector, an excellent one. It goes like this. Set a thief to catch a thief. Set a thief to... I do not understand it, but it amuses me. <laughs> it amuses me, too. <laughs> Murphy will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Ted Pearson. Do you uh, suffer from poison ivy or poison oak in the summertime? Well, if you do, here's good news for you. The DuPont Company is now producing Amate Weed Killer in quantities large enough for general distribution, and it'll be on sale in your neighborhood. Uh, DuPont Amate, dissolved in water and applied according to directions, is sure death to poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac. It kills poison ivy and other noxious weeds by penetration into the plant tissue. It goes down the stalk to the roots, not just the part of the plant that shows above ground. So the plants killed by DuPont M8 are dead, tops and roots. Uh, poison ivy has always been a painful nuisance, a very serious nuisance. Some people are so extremely sensitive to it that, well, even the least contact with the plant results in poisoning. Digging the plants up by the roots is hard work, and more often than not, work that has to be done over again. Because if you miss even a few roots, the growth comes back. And burning the plants after you dig them out is dangerous, too, because the smoke contains poisonous oil. This development of modern industrial chemistry, which the DuPont Company sells under the trademark Amate, makes digging and burning unnecessary. You mix it with water, sprinkle or spray it on poison ivy when the plants are in full leaf and the job is done. When used according to directions, the compound is not hazardous for human beings or livestock. There's no danger of fire or explosion. DuPont Amate is one of two outstanding weed-killing compounds. DuPont 2,4-D is the other. Both are among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Star, George Murphy. Thank you very much, Dwight. You know, there is an ever proverb which goes, he who pleases others pleases himself. It is written. It is written. Well, talking of writing, George, have you ever read a story called The Cruise of the Cachalot? Uh, Cruise of... Say, uh, isn't that the one about the uh, Erie Canal barge captain who captured a whale in New York Harbor? Well, that's it. If you remember, he put the whale to good use. Sure, he kind of solved the housing shortage with it, didn't he? Say, that would make a pretty good story for Cavalcade. Well, that's what we think. So we're doing it next week as the last show before Cavalcade summer vacation. And we're featuring Everett Sloan, Ed Jerome, and Agnes Young. Well, I'll be listening. It's one of my favorite stories. Good night, Dwight. Good night. for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Our Cavalcade play was written by Russell Hughes. Featured in tonight's cast were Ted Osborne, Dan Ocko, Milton Herman, Bob Dryden, Frank Behrens, and Rolf Sedan. This is Dwight Weiss inviting you to listen next week to Cruise of the Cachalot, featuring Everett Sloan, Ed Jerome, and Agnes Young on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. NBC, the national broadcasting company.